good look at the campus here at Gonzaga. There's a good look inside. It's hard to believe that another college basketball season is here, but indeed it is, gentlemen. Greg Heister, Dan Dickow, Richard Fox, and you guys played here. The fans don't seem to be taking anything for granted over these years, do they? Not at all. They don't care who they're playing against. They just want to come watch their Zags get after it and especially get the season started off on the right foot, which I'm sure they're going to tonight. And, Richard, they're playing Northwest Nazarene. Obviously, this isn't a team that should test Gonzaga at all, although we've, we've seen some crazy things in our years around the game. Yeah. But what is it that you hope to get out of a contest like this? Well, I think for GU, you got some new faces, but like every year we seem to talk about roles change, and we'll get into that as the, as the game progresses, but he's trying to try to define those roles and, and see how guys, certain guys fit together, because it's one thing to practice against each other, uh, but it's another thing entirely to play against an opponent. So the coaching staff gets to play a little bit with their lineups and different personnel, but Really, as a player, it's all about finally being able to play against somebody other than your teammate, and that's really exciting. And it's almost cliche. We hear that every year, right? But it's but it's true, right? It's just, it's nice to be banging against somebody that you don't know. It's completely true. You take a look at these guys. They've been banging against each other for the past three weeks in practice. They're ready to go after somebody else, whether it's guards picking up full court, getting in the passing lane, or bigs just shoving somebody else out of the way. They're ready to look at somebody else and take the challenge on against somebody else. They're ranked 21 and 22 in the two respective polls around the country, gentlemen. Is it a good ranking at this point? Yeah, absolutely. You think this is a top 20 team? Absolutely. You I think it's better than that, Richard? I, I think this, this team is made up, in my opinion, you just on paper, this is a team that wouldn't surprise me ended up top 10 in the country. This is a good, good bunch. We'll get into, into you know, the personnel and, and how guys have improved. But top to bottom, there's great depth. You know, the inside players, to me, are as strong as they've ever been here in this program. And obviously, anytime you can bring back, bring back some guards like they have, uh, they got a chance. Here's your numerical credit union your starting lineups. First for Northwest Nazarene. Molinen, Nichols, Jones, Hawkins, and Karimski, the starting five. The head coach is Dave Daniels. What an opportunity it is for a, a program like this. I know you know uh, Coach Daniels. We'll talk about that in a moment. In America Credit Union starting lineups for Gonzaga. You've got Dower, Bell, D. Landry, Eddy, Harris, and Pangos on the floor. An opening possession controlled by the Crusaders. And then they get an over and back call. Explain that one to me, gentlemen. I don't agree with that call right <laughs> off the bat. First play of the year, but, you know, Gonzaga will take it. Northwest Nazarene, Jones did not have uh, control of the possession. That was odd. It's not only the players' exhibition. It's ours. It's the officials. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Pangos with it, and we've got our first foul in the game. This will be on Michael Karimski, the sophomore from the Czech Republic inside. He's seven feet. 240 pounds. Coach Daniels wants as much size as he can find over there on the bench in the game. Uh, they started six out of the 26 games last year. Nice player, young. He's going to get a workout tonight against this front line for GU. Here's Bell. Drive with the left hand. Hangs and hits. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dan, he's got to be more aggressive this year. He shot the ball so well last year, but only in only five games did he get up more than 10 shots. I think this year you'll see a much more aggressive, assertive Gary Bell on the offensive end. Dan, did you ever play with a guy like Bell at Gonzaga? He's a unique guard, isn't he? He is. You know, I, I think you could take a look at Pangos and Gary Bell's backcourt and kind of compare them in a way to Blake Stepanai. Kind of interchangeable parts. You take a look at this highlight right here with Gary. One of the things that's going to give him a very successful season is that mid-range game right there. That little floater is a very important shot for him this season. And he averaged 47.7% from behind the arc a year ago as a freshman. I know you were over 45 your junior and senior years, but 47.7? And in league play, bumped it up to almost 53%. He just got better and better as the year went on, a lot like Devin Pangos did as well. But can you shoot it better than that? I mean, are the expectations that he shoots it at 50? Or the expectations should be that he doesn't drop much lower than that. I mean, anything over, anything in the mid 40s from the three point line is a great number. The thing that you want to see is him finding other ways to get his shot from the three point line rather than just spot ups. That foul called on Keith Molin in his first team's third. 1854. We're just underway at the McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane. Gonzaga and Northwest Nazarene. Sam Dower baseline shot is short. 
And rebound, and back comes the Crusaders. Kenny Jones, number 20 to the baseline, rebounded. And then the block. Again, the block. Kevin Rima trying to go strong, doing everything he can, but Gonzaga is big. Oh, yeah, big, and you saw both Harris and Dower contesting the shot. Well, Elias, we talked about the top 25 blocks last year, only 28 on this, over his first two years here at GU, and Dower only 10 last year. For a guy with the, the length that he has and the size, he needs to be a better defender, and that's something that the coaching staff has emphasized. There's Rima, and he hits from the baseline. Good-looking play there. What do you know about Coach Daniels, Dan? Well, he was a heck of a player before he got in, in uh, into coaching at the college ranks. He played in the 2000 Olympics to, with Team Canada as Steve Nash's backup. Um, I got to know him about 10, 12 years ago. Very, very high-level player. Very high-character guy, and, and he uh, he's really enjoying his time at Northwest Nazarene now. This is his second year. He's really enjoying it. Thinks they've got a chance to do some good things at that level. Wow. Dan Dickow going deep. <laughs> it's a good effort by you out of the get-go. Well, it's really funny how the basketball world is so small. <laughs> We've got a lot of the same uh, similar friends that uh, were with athletes in action basketball in different places across the world. Dan goes right down the middle strong, and he'll shoot free throws. I like seeing that right there from Kevin Pangos. Push the tempo. Get the defense on their heels. Defense doesn't commit. Get all the way to the basket. Get, create that contact. Get yourself to the free throw line. That's another way this season that he can expand his game and really improve. You brought up Dick on step a moment ago. Mark Few has to get just giddy when he thinks about Bell and Pangos together. But not only is each, is each one talented in their own right, but they, they fit. And they're young. Yeah, they're young. And, and this freshman sophomore jump is usually one of the bigger jumps you have in college, but their games fit. They play so well together. It's one thing to have two good guards, but the fact that they play so well together, I think, is a real advantage. Bengals had a tremendous freshman year in Gonzaga. Hard to beat it. And you look at Kevin, his all-time freshman leading scorer, Gonzaga, with 450 points, beating Adam Morrison's record. But then Gary Bell comes in third with 342. So two backcourt players that got a ton of experience their freshman year, looking to build upon that this year. Four fouls, four turnovers now for the Crusaders. And it's a 3-2 GU lead. There's Bell. E. Landrietti with a spin. They'll try to finish and does. Nice move. He's got broad shoulders, gentlemen. Yeah, that's an area where I think the coaching staff believes he can get better offensively. Last year, had to sit out the first 10 games. Struggled on that end of the floor. He, he's gotten a lot better over the summer on the offensive end. There's a little step back shot and good by Kenny Jones. The one thing I'm noticing about Northwest Nazarene already is that they run a lot of offensive sets, and they look good doing it. <laughs> well, one thing Coach Daniel said before the game is he really wanted to get up and down the floor, which you're seeing right there on that possession. They're going to play four guards at times. They're going to shoot the three, but they're really going to try to get up and down the floor. Here's Harris running the floor. He can't finish. Rima with the rebound. Well, you notice how fast... GU's playing. Nazarene is playing quick as well. But that's something the staff has emphasized. Let's get up and down and let's make quick decisions in the half court. That's a tough shot there by Hawkins. Here's Bell. Runs right into Rima. And the block is called. That'll be foul number five on the Crusaders. A lot of new faces about to come into the game now, gentlemen, for GU. Of course, David Stockton. Already now a, a junior. Hard to believe. <laughs> You're getting old. I was gonna say, he's That's not, what that means. You're he's getting not old. getting old. I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I he was a freshman in high, in high school. Mike Hart, Kyle Dranginis, Shemek Karnowski, and who else did I? Uh, Drew Barham, the transfer from the University of Memphis. Young man already with his undergraduate degree. Smart kid has fit in easily 
with the program and, and the rest of the players, and they really like what he brings to the table. He searches out shots from that perimeter, and he's got some good sides, about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, well, he can find a nice niche for himself on this team, because if you look at the other three men on this team, Mike Hart, Guy Landrietti, Drew obviously shoots the ball much, much more consistently from the perimeter than those guys do, so if he can really come in and knock down shots, he's going to find himself some good minutes this year. Bell missing the free throw. That possession's going to stay with Gonzaga as Bell goes out of the game. And Kyle Dranginis, the red shirt freshman from Nampa, Idaho, checking in. And I know Coach Few really likes him, too. Another good young guard. Yeah. There's Stockton from the bench. Missed the shot. And David with possession again. Shemek. Karnowski working hard inside. Stockton missed the shot. Karnowski missed the putback. And this is Kenny Jones. That's offensive, right? Yes. And that's what Mike Hart does right there. And that's why he played big minutes last year. That's why he's always going to have a chance to play big minutes this year is because he does those little things. Step in front, take the charge, give your team extra possessions. That is so underrated in the game of basketball. Gonzaga up 7-4 early in Spokane. Welcome back. Time now for tonight's keys to the game brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Gentlemen. Dan, what do you think? Keys to the game. Not just the game, but we're looking at the season. These are keys to a successful season for Gonzaga. You know, I think one thing Gonzaga has to do for this season to be a deep NCAA tournament run is find the go-to guy. Push comes to shove. Who's going to take that big shot? For me, I look at replacing Zachary's toughness. I think Shemek and that front line can replace his game to a certain degree, but that toughness he had around the basket on both ends is, is, is a void that needs to be filled. And no doubt about it, Rob Zachary, the leader of this program a year ago. Kevin Pango says he wants that role this year. We'll see how that evolves. Stockton with it back out on offense now for Gonzaga. First shot attempt for Mr. Barham is off. And back come the Crusaders. See David Stockton really picking up the defensive pressure. That's something he's worked really hard on over the course of the summer, getting ready for that. There's Dranginis. The transition three. As Hart with a nice catch. Missed a shot, but the transition three, Dan, back in your day was huge at Gonzaga. You and Step got that going. It didn't matter who was running the point. Somebody was shooting it in transition. No, that's the great thing about being a point guard in this program that can shoot the ball. Coach Few is going to give you the green light to do it. And you can definitely say that Blake Steph and I took advantage of that. So I look for Kevin to be able to have that this year. David will work his way into that at times. And again, this is a team, and I, I heard Coach Few say it at practice last week. He wants this team to play really fast. He's wanted all of his teams to play really fast. I get that. But this one, he, it's obvious he thinks he's got the pieces to do that. Uh, I think he likes his depth. He's got good athletes. And then even in the half court, he wants quick decisions. He wants the ball to be swung, the ball to move. Jones with the miss. Stockton with his head up. Dranginis can't reel it in. Turnover. You know, that's one of those hit or miss plays. David can really get those in there a lot of times. But he's got to... To be successful this year, he's got to figure out when is the right time to throw that pass. There's Jones. Lost the handle. Picked up by Stockton. He's got Karnowski with him. Throw it up to him. And Shemek Karnowski will shoot free throws. You know, that's a great play on both ends. He showed hard, heads out on the, on the ball screen, got his hand on the ball, causes a turnover, then he runs down the floor, and he's able to make a play at the rim, draws the foul. He's a much better athlete than I think they thought he was going to be before he got here. He's, he, he's impressed them in that area. Let me ask you a question. Are you guys surprised that he hasn't gotten a post-touch yet? No, he's only been in for about two minutes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that with any team and with any young player, you're going to earn those touches in the post. You're going to earn your opportunities to play in a pick and roll if you're a guard. And so I think through the course of practice, he's going to earn that. So I think there will come a time this season where he will be put down on the block and they throw it to him consistently. Karnowski missing the front end. Richard 
Look at his stroke. You like his stroke at oh, the free throw line? He looks like he's going to be a good one, right? Yeah.